So for this part, we will need two H pieces and one ultrasonic sensor. Now notice this looks a bit like um, the head of Wally. So <laughs> it's very cute. Um, so it's very difficult to mistake this for any other sensor. Um, now we are going to take the one of the H pieces and we're going to take the thing we've already built and we're going to place the H piece on the last three holes here. And notice that it's on this one and not that one. So this is what we have. And now we're going to take the second H piece and we're going to put it in the inside. So it will be in here. And now we're going to put the sonar, ultrasonic sensor, right into these holes. So they should line up and click and again very stable. So this is what it should look like. Now we're going to take our built EV3 computer brick with motors and our little sensor contraption thing here and we're going to overlay them. So we have, we're going to use the second hole and the fourth hole, just like we're going to use the second hole and the fourth hole on this one. And we are going to place them like this on top of the two black connecting rods we've got on the motors. So you can see here we've got it here like this. Oh, it's a bit difficult to see. So these two like this and these two on the other side like this. And make sure you've got to do them at once at once because otherwise it may be very difficult There you go, there's one side and there's the other side. And you should click it and it should be very satisfying. <laughs> so, it should look like, again, make sure it's secure. If there's anything that's dangling around, then you know it's not very, not pushed in properly. So, for this section, we have a in, two interesting pieces and they are they look like this they have holes uh, round holes on two of the sides and then on the other two sides they have um, cr two cross shaped holes and we also have two long blue connector rods and four of these half crossed half rounded connector rods. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take these pieces and we're going to take one of these cross shaped connector rods and we're going to place it through one of the cross shaped holes. As you can see here. And they're going to do the same on the other cross-shaped hole. So we're going to take the crossed end and we're going to place the crossed section in the hole. So it should look like this. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other one. So we have here this connection and we also do the same on the other hole. So they should both look like this. Now we are going to put them on the our EV3. Now what we do is we're going to flip over our EV3 until 
we can see these sections near the top of the EV3. Push these into the holes so it will sort of click and it will be very secure. And we're going to do the same with the other one. So we're going to push them in the other three holes. So it'll look like this. Now we're going to take the short end of the longer connector rod and we're going to place them in the hole in the middle of these pieces. So it should click in like so. And we'll do the same with the other one. So we take the short end and we place it through the hole in the middle. So for this part of the building process, we will need a nine hole long straight beam, two of these short black connector rods. Now these ones are rounded at either end. A silver ball bearing. This comes in the EV3 kit. And this very Lord of the Rings goblet kind of <laughs> um, shaped piece. Now firstly we're going to take the ball bearing and we're going to put it in the hole and should click in like so and you'll notice when you move it around that the ball moves so it, that means it's a very good system to use for a small maneuvering wheel system at the back and then now we're going to take this straight beam and we're going to place the straight beam onto these connections. Now make sure that when you place them on that there are two holes remaining on either side and three holes in the middle as you can see. Now place one of the black connector rods onto one of the holes in the middle three and then we're going to place the second one and the other hole on the other side so there's one hole left in the middle and we're going to take this ball bearing contraption and we're going to place it like this onto the two middle black beams, maybe a bit difficult to see, so like so. So it should hit should be relatively stable and this is what it looks like. Don't worry about having these pieces sticking out. Um, they're useful for the future, especially when adding in sensors. So now we are going to attach the cables for the motors. So here we have a long black cable. Now when we add the plugs into the motor we always make sure we push it in with the flap facing upwards where we see the cutout and we push it in and we'll hear a click. Remember the one I'm doing now is this motor here. So make sure this is the right motor. And I'm going to put the free end of the cable into slot B, as you can see. Now, for the other motor on this end, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that the flaps and the cutout are in the same position, and I'm going to push them in. So it should look like this. And I'm going to get the other free end. I'm going to put them into C. Now you'll notice there's going to be a crossover here. Don't worry, that's what's supposed to happen. So it's not in the wrong place. And this is what it should look like. 
Last but not least, we are going to attach the cables for the sensors at the front. Now, firstly, we are going to attach the cables for the sonar sensor. And again, remember to place the flaps and align them with the cutoff. And also, please note here that I have used the shortest length cables. The reason is because it is much easier to put the cables in, also that it makes things much more compact. Now, this can be very difficult, so I want you to take care and work very slowly because otherwise the cable may become way too twisted and it might not work properly. So we're going to loop the cable like so, and we're going to push it into the hole, as shown here, oh dear. So we'll come through the other side, and we pull it, so it looks like that. Now we want to put the sonar in number three, so you can see number three. And this may be a little bit tricky, and it depends how small your fingers are, I suppose. But you're going to push it in. Again, make sure that it's in the right way. And do you hear that? It's a click. So we know it's in. You can see it looks... You can imagine how much more messy it would be if it was a longer cable. So, see, that's pretty well done. Now we're going to plug in the sensor, so the light sensor in the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to make things easier on ourselves by taking one of the ends and putting to port 4, this one. This will be the one for the light sensor. Again, you can hear the click. And unfortunately, this can get a little bit difficult, especially since if we did, if we plugged it in like this, You can, it can sometimes go over the sonar sensor, and we don't want that. So, we're going to loop it around into the inside of this section, and we're going to pull it out from underneath. So, and now we're going to place it, and again, align the flap with the cutoff, the cutout, and then push it in. As you can see, it's definitely out of the way of the sonar, and it's very, very compact. So that's how you build a sumo robot.